It is the band gap of absorber layer in a single junction solar cell that determines the maximal theoretical conversion efficiency. The band gap determines the fraction of energy of a radiation spectrum that can be absorbed. However, this is not the only aspect that limits solar cell efficiency. Shockley and Quiser determined an important theoretical limit on the conversion efficiency of solar cells. This limit is the topic of this video. Knowing the Shockley-Quiser limit will help us to understand which material band gaps are good candidates for designing high efficiency solar cells. Here you see our familiar current voltage and power voltage curves for a solar cell. You should know by now that the efficiency of a solar cell can be calculated as the product of the open circuit voltage, VOC, the short circuit current, ISC, and the fill factor, FF, divided by the incident power, PI. The incident power does not depend on a solar cell. However, what are the limits of the external solar cell parameters? VOC, ISC, and fill factor. Let's go through them one by one. We will start with ISC, or short circuit current. As current of a solar cell depends on the flow of electrons and holes, it is limited by the amount of photogenerated electrons and holes in the absorber layer of the solar cell. We already determined this limit in the last video. You remember the so-called ultimate conversion efficiency for a solar cell with a single absorber. We calculated this efficiency by combining the fraction of incident power absorbed by a solar cell with the fraction of power that a solar cell can deliver as useful energy. The figure on the left shows the ultimate conversion efficiency as a function of absorber band gap energy for different spectra. In case of the AM1.5 spectrum, which is represented by the green line, the maximum ultimate efficiency is around 48%. This is for a solar cell with the absorber that has a band gap of 1.2 electron volts. We can also calculate number of photons that the absorber material absorbs from the AM1.5 spectrum and relate it to a potential photocurrent density. This potential photocurrent density represents the maximal short circuit current that a solar cell with an absorber of a certain band gap can deliver. In case of an absorber with the band gap of 1.2 electron volt, the maximal photocurrent density is 46.2 milliamperes per square centimeter. However, this ultimate efficiency of 48% assumes that the band gap energy, EG, corresponds to an electrochemical potential equal to the open circuit voltage, VOC. When the band gap is of 1.2 electron volts, this means that the open circuit voltage is equal to 1.2 volts. We call the electrochemical potential related to the band gap of the absorber Vg. However, the open circuit voltage in real solar cells is not equal to Vg. Let's look what the open circuit voltage limit of a real solar cell is. The VOC in a solar cell depends on the quasi-fermi level splitting in a solar cell. You can see the equation for VOC which we derive from the Shockley diode equation. Here you can see that the VOC depends on some constants and factors such as the temperature, photocurrent density, and saturation dark current density, G0. G0, as you have learned, represents the recombination current in a solar cell. The lower the G0, the larger the VOC. Can G0 be zero? Probably not. Otherwise, we could achieve the infinite open circuit voltage. 
So what is the lowest possible value of G0? This lowest possible value can be determined when we neglect, when we neglect all recombination processes except one. This is the recombination process that is responsible for emission of radiation when a solar cell is considered as a black body. We discussed black body radiation with ref reference to the sun way back in the beginning of this course. A solar cell will absorb energy from light and some of that energy will inevitably be radiated because the solar cell is at a higher temperature than zero Kelvin. We can calculate this G0 value through this equation. I will not go through it in full. In practical solar cells, even under large concentration of light, the splitting of the quasi-Fermi levels does not match the band gap energy of an absorber layer. You can visualize this by looking at the band diagram of a PN junction solar cell. The splitting of the quasi-Fermi levels determines the open circuit voltage, VOC. The fraction of the band gap energy that corresponds to the energy related to the open circuit voltage is defined as the band gap utilization efficiency, or eta V. Using the equation for VOC and G0, we can plot the band gap utilization efficiency as a function of the band gap energy of a solar cell absorber. From the plot on the left, we can see that eta V is around 75% for a band gap of 1.2 electron volts. Good. So we have now looked at the limits of current and voltage that solar cells with different absorber can deliver. But what about the field factor? There is not a real theoretical approach to the limit of the field factor, but we can use an empirical approach. From this equation, we can calculate the maximum field factor for a given VOC. For an absorber with the band gap of 1.2 electron volts, the maximum fill factor is 0 0.87. So let's put everything together. We have the ultimate efficiency, which takes the spectral mismatch into account. We then have the band gap utilization efficiency, which uses the smallest possible G0 value based on black body radiation. Finally, we have the maximum fill factor, which is also dependent on the VOC. Combining all of them, we can get the shockley quasar limit for energy conversion efficiency based on the band gap of solar cell absorber plotted here. For AM1.5 spectrum, the maximum efficiency is 33.1%. Can be found for an absorber having the band gap of 1.34 electron volts. As you can imagine, this is not a total story. For real materials, there are other fundamental limits as well. Armin Richter, with his colleagues, calculated the limit of conversion efficiency for crystalline silicon-based solar cell using additional recombination processes inherent to this material. His result was 29.4% which is a bit lower than what we have achieved with Shockley-Quizer limit. A link to his paper is given in the course materials, but going through all of his work is outside the scope of this course. You now know what the efficiency limit of single junction solar cells is. In the last set of videos, we will tackle how to reach these theoretical limits and even use some tricks to exceed them.